And then maybe at the end we can um, talk about some Lakeland 100 predictions or hopes or fears because uh, we're both on the start line. We'll have two, obviously, quite If I see you, Andy, then you're having a shocker. <laughs> but we'll see. I don't know. I, I was, you see, like, it goes both ways. I was Strava stalker and you, and I was like, Jesus Christ, he's packing in some miles. Right, Don't yeah. listen to a word, Andy. Sandbagger <laughs> is his middle name. He'll go. Oh, you know, one of those ones where he's standing on the start line. He's like, oh, you know, I've got a niggle in this quad and Just I've got a bit easy. in this car. Yeah. And yeah. Like, <laughs> then it goes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. If you listen to the podcast uh, over a period of time, you realize I'll do lots of lots of miles, but not so much quality, I think is safe safe to say. I don't know. It, it jo- looks pretty structured. It's, it's looked it, pretty structured it, for the last month or so. You've got it, Andy. You've already got. You don't even need to talk to him. He's getting it from both sides. (laughs) (laughs) All right, moving on. (laughs) Right, shall we start? It's Friday. Is it? Gary, I have no idea. Day, time, month. All I know is I'm carrying a little pot belly around that I didn't have 10 days ago. <laughs> Holiday my... belly. <laughs> Holiday belly. Welcome to the D and Trails podcast. Me, Eddie, and my holiday belly. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks to all our patrons and partners too. We got Mountain Fuel, Outdoor Active, Vila Forte, Silver, Active Route, The Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebel, Sportshoes.com, Big Bubble Hats, X Miles, Om, and Fawnside Farm. Cottages, pop over to Patreon and check them out. Not much you can buy with a couple of quid in these day and ages, is there? As I've learned, I think the cheapest cup of tea I've bought so far on my UK tour has been about three pounds fifty. I thought your Sloan Square um, cup of tea sounded quite good value. Oh, that was the best, wasn't it? Must pop back there soon. Must pop back to Sloan Square. Anyway, pop over to Summit Crazy if you'd like some awesome tea and trails merch. Apparently, it's one of the best conversation starters in the business. Episode 31. It's all glamour this week. Andy Berry joins us live from his van outside Domino Pizzas in a county Durham car park. Big numbers again over on Strava, and we are spoiling you. Was that was that the Frere Rocher ad, Frere Rocher advert? The am- ambassador. We are spoiling the ambassador. You. <laughs> we are spoiling you. <laughs> well, no, not only do you have our nutrition Patreon partner giveaway, but our friends over at Innovate have a pair of trail. Fly Ultra G 280s to give away. Yeah, stay tuned for that. More tales from the trails. And do we have any five star reviews? The cupboards were bare last week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> but first, my podcast bestie, Edwina Sutton. How are you doing, Eddie? Are you refreshed? Or exhausted. I'm still on the holiday trail, Gary. And as I'm going to tell you now, the running has taken uh, not just a backseat, <laughs> it's gone out the boot and is tied to a tin can at the back. And I have thoroughly, I've just let myself go, Gary. I've oh, that's brilliant. Myself. But it's a time and a place. As my dad says, it's been a non-starter last week. We just didn't get anywhere. We had our week in London. It was super fun. But as my step said, it was so tiring. We walked over 20K a day because you just walk so much when you do all these like tourist things and Bryn loves the tour. We were not allowed a day off, a morning off. Where should we go now? And I'd be like, should we, can we just sit? Can we just sit? We didn't just sit. It was, so we, we did, we did do some, we did do some running, but it was tricky to fit in because, and also we had lots of late nights. And so we wouldn't get to bed to like midnight. And then we, if we wanted to go running, we had to be out the door really by seven. And I wasn't super motivated to do that a lot of the time as well. No. So we ate too much. Let's just say we ate too much processed food. I downloaded the Deliveroo app. Oh my goodness, <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I downloaded the Deliveroo app, the Uber app, and what was the other one? City Mapper. By the end of the week, I practically had moved into London and I was uh I was everywhere. Anyway, even Bryn on his way home, he's gone home now. He he messaged, he said, I bought something like you buy. And I was like, what? He said, you know, one of those bowls with the salad in. Oh, butter bowl. <laughs> He was like, I couldn't do it anymore. I had to have some vegetables. Even Bryn broke broke himself. So the running took a heavy backseat. But we did do two good run sessions. We did four by 10 minutes and a totes classic. When you can't decide what to do, 12, 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. 
increasing the places Ooh. you go. Yeah. Really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed that. And because we only really had an hour, there was a five minute warm up. It took us five minutes to run to Hyde Park and we'd literally go through the gate and I'd go, Bryn, watch go. starts. <laughs> Let's go. And I give it doom, 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 him behind me. <laughs> 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 anyway, I I was running to heart rate, but I was trying quite hard. I could not drop him. Either of those sessions, I'd be like small incline. He's going down. <laughs> Always behind <laughs> me. Oh, this is exciting! Bit of competition yeah, he was for Todd. Strong, Jurette. annoying, annoyingly <laughs> strong. Um, so we did do sessions. We did a bit of jogging, but it was it was my probably my lowest amount of training for the whole year. But I'm easy with that. I'm easy with yeah. that. It's all good. It's, good. it's all good. We did a couple of touristy things we went to harry potter world have you been to harry potter world no no is it thumbs up or a... don't don't no okay i mean it was really <laughs> interesting it was really good it was a bit orcs as we sat in the beginning bit and they said so you know big harry potter fans and Bryn and i were like oh i don't think <laughs> don't i was like hey, I, i've watched the first film i read the books when they came out i'm not sure i finished the books i think i it got all a bit too much for me the films definitely got too much for me they're way yeah. out of my scare zone then um <laughs> i i really enjoyed it it's all about it starts off with I don't even know the names. What are the names? The three main characters. And they Hermione, say how... Harry and... Oh, goodness me. That's about as much as I can guess. They say how they lived on this set for 10 years and they grew up on this set and there were thousands of people there and it's really clever. And then you walk around all the set and you see how they made everything. Um, and so the kids love it because they get to see all the stuff. They've not seen all the films either, but they've seen the first. I think the first two are really quite kids friendly and then CGI takes over and they get a bit yeah. scary. But they loved it, and they they just and then uh, as a parent, you can like read. You know how the signs in museums. Well, my kids, they're like, "Don't stop reading the signs, mum." I love all the little signs. But the annoying thing was there was a, it was all about like taking photos, share this on your social media, blah blah blah. So as you're trying to read the signs, there's twenty kids with phones like taking yeah. photos, 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 and I'm like, "Oh my god, put your phones away, stop it!" So but they're encouraging it too. It's crazy. Yeah, and they were. Encouraging it. And then I was like, it's really unfair. I this is discrimination if you don't have a phone. <laughs> um, but it was really good. Kids loved it. Uh, kids loved that. So we did that. We then, Bryn's choice, we went on HMS Belfast, the warship. Oh, my dad Ooh. was on Belfast. No way. What was he doing Where? on Belfast? Oh, my goodness me. He said he um, was firing guns. So must have. he said he had bad ears. Um, yeah, I don't know actually what his role was on the ship. But I remember <gasps> watching as a child. I used to love it. He had loads of silent movies when he was in the Antarctic pen- penguins. I've got that right, isn't it? Penguins, yeah. Antarctic. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Loads of, uh, yeah. I used How to amazing. Well, we sat where they fired all the guns. We went and yeah. all... How funny, Gary. The kids loved that much more than they loved Harry Potter World because it was like real and it was like, and of course they love all the guns and everything and the stories and it's real. It's um, a good so ship. It's a good ship. I recommend that for uh, an older, there were quite a lot of ladders. So not for the older person or the very younger person, but middle-aged, middle-aged kids, as I call them, before they get to teenagers. Uh, they love that. So thanks, Bryn. You, your tourist uh your obsession with tourism played off. Uh, and then we finished going with Evie's birthday trip. We went to see Phantom of the Opera on our last night. I'll tell you a little story about Phantom of the Opera, Gary. Yeah. Uh, my mum and dad first went to see it when I was Evie's age and they came back with the tape. It was a double cassette. It was about all the tapes we had. So we had it in the car and we listened to it incessantly, me and my sisters. We knew it all off by heart. I always wanted to go and see it. So my mum and dad went to me to go and see it when I was 18. Oh my God, amazing. Um, and then I worked for Andrew Lloyd Webber when I was in my 20s and he oh. took me to go and see it when I was in my mid-20s and I sat in a box and I drank too much champagne. Oh, that sounds um, exciting. And always loved it. Know every word. Literally, I could sing the score. Nobody would want to hear me sing the score. <laughs> and then uh, and then I sat there with my little girl thinking, oh. come to the circle. And I was a little bit nervous that they might be quite frightened. They've teched it up a bit too now. Loud, There's a little loud bangs yeah. and the scenery is a bit more reactive. And I, I knew there would like people. But we've watched the film version of it, the um, Albert Hall version of it. So, And they know the song. So I was like, you know, you know, the, the man's going to come hanging down at some point but it's not real it's not real I kept looking but they, oh my gosh they loved it they loved it they were sitting there and it was something for everybody because it was like bangs and soldiers so Rory was like I love this and Evie loved all the ballet dancers 
uh, it was great. Come full circle. I've seen it. How come I've not seen that? Oh my God, you can be my next. You can be my next. <laughs> I'd love to. We went to see a few years ago, I went to see Hamilton, and that was just amazing. Oh, there was so much stuff. I was like, I really want to take them to see another show, but they're so expensive. Yeah. And I and the kids have enough, like these London trips we do, they get a lot. So you have to slightly temper it. Anyway, uh, we handed the kids over to mum and dad, and then we had a kids' free weekend. And I had images of us um, doing loads of running we took our backpacks we took loads of Vila Forte we had tailwind and we ended up doing I think we did one run it was absolutely pouring with rain and we splashed along by the river I said to Bryn if the weather's really shit for Tot Dret sorry I said to Bryn if the weather's really rubbish for Tot Dret shall we do it and he was like well you can I'm not Oh, <laughs> right. oh I thought great. he was going to go, I'm doing it. Yeah, I thought he'd go, absolutely. And he was like, well, oh, no, you can. I'm not going to bother if it's wrong. Um, so we only did one run uh, because you always imagine you're going to have loads of time. But I, of course, I was heavily involved in wedding admin the day of the wedding. It was such a long day, Gary. Oh, my God. Full on day by um, I lasted in my heels approximately I'm I put 40 minutes but realistically it was Makes I wore sense. them in the church <laughs> and was like I was in charge of getting people ready for the photos so I just went right quick bridesmaids photos <laughs> I'll do us first <laughs> and I'll take these heels off uh anyway yeah, yeah it was it such lovely. A- I think you shared a picture on your Instagram stories it looked very lovely it wasn't as bad as I thought it was okay I covered up <laughs> I had my hair like all twisted bit of hair bit of makeup you can carry you can cover up all the saggy bits <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, absolutely loved it. Seeing all my friends, the food, the, we, I may have had a few glasses of fizzy Fanta pop <gasps> and I own Biscuits. that dance floor, Gary. I own that dance floor. Let's just say a couple of times I was the only one on the dance floor and that was fine. Just gave me extra space. <laughs> do you do your strut as the song comes on that you like? You get it I just you. shake the shoulders a little, <laughs> add the click, add the click and off I go. Oh my God. I loved it. Loved it. But came to about 11 p.m. and Bryn and I were done we were hanging both of us were like we're done we're done get me yeah uber app came in handy then such a lot and I got myself home 11 o'clock is about an hour past my bedtime so yeah I'm struggling especially when you've been going that was like we had been go I'd been going for 14 hours and when you normally see your best friend getting married there's a lot of like adrenaline looking after her and then I was like people start to go home her mum and dad went home and I was like I think I'll work here yeah as soon as it's somebody done. goes, that's it. Yeah, it's I was like, oh, I just want a cup of tea now. I just want a cup of tea. Uh, and then I had to get up at dawn to get the train to go and get uh, oh. safe mum and dad. So it was, oh my God, it's such a home. So I didn't run for three days. Not for, not, I could have, but I just chose to put my energy into that. I was just like, I don't, one, I was worried about wearing heels with <laughs> sore legs. I think like, this one, I just wanted to put my energy into something different and not yeah. worry about that. So I just wiped it out and wiped out those for, for a few days and um, enjoyed just being like a normal person who has muscly arms. So the training has, but the fun has gone up. And I think it's really important that we can do that and balance oh, yeah. it and be, as we always talk about being flexible and not letting it stress us out. I mean, I, it's a really good time for me because though I've got Totra, oh my God, two months, two months, <laughs> loads of time, loads of time. I'm not stressing about it because it's an adventure race. So it's quite a good idea if you have got like the summer so hard for us to train when we've got families at home and job and you've got to juggle. But if you want to still train for something, putting it in your head as like an adventure race, Yeah. even though, of course, Bryn and I are going to, uh, we're going to try really hard, but we're also going to cut ourselves a bit of slack at the same time. And if we want to have an extra bowl of noodle soup at the refuge or an extra sleep or sit down or take a selfie, uh, we will do. So it kind of like takes the pressure off the training as well. So it's my new thing. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put every race down as an adventure race. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's similar to me with Dragon's Back Race. With Lake 100 being where it is, it just really writes off any um, aspirations for kind of peaking for dragon's back so yeah i've just swapped it it's going to be an adventure but also perhaps you need to look after yourself a little bit better than i have in the last two weeks when my diet has involved beige drinks food and (laughs) i do normally enjoy that just 
basically massively overindulgent for a fortnight after a big race. And yeah. This has got to keep me honest, really. Yeah, I can't really go too crazy. We'll see. We'll Maybe see. I'll have right. my holiday holiday belly. <laughs> <laughs> the I attached race. to my holiday <laughs> belly. I went, so I did, I got, went for a run this morning and I was like, ooh, my thighs are a little... <laughs> I love, I love opening up um, after Christmas dinner, maybe just undoing the top button. It's like, oh, yeah. Well, I've got my stretchy leggings on now. So I was like, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, everybody. Normal service will resume, uh, as you'll find out at the end of the podcast. By Sunday, I'll be back to being a lean, mean racing machine. Uh, talking about lean, mean racing machines, Gary Thwaites, what you've been doing? Oh, well, I've been back on the treadmill. Somebody called me out because I did say in my last treadmill session was my last treadmill session, but I just couldn't These resist. people that listen to the podcast properly. <laughs> Somebody said, do you think Eddie's at the Morsey when it went into, um, when the Tour yeah, de France yeah. went through? And someone went, no, you know she's not there. You know she's in <laughs> London. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was absolutely wrecked after this. It was two times five, two times. Five. I mentioned it last week. I was going to do the five, four, three, two, one. I don't know what it is about the treadmill, but you, you go into really, this mega zone. You can bury yourself big time. And I had the Tour de France um, Netflix special for company, and that really did, especially the five which, minutes and the which, four minutes. Which episode were you on for that? Session? Oh, Garen Thomas has made an appearance. <gasps> oh, he's great, isn't he? Yeah. So that was um it's so it's like really jeopardy. They said, oh, you know, they have a little chat with somebody and they're gonna spotlight on those for maybe half of the show. Quite often it doesn't quite go all of the You their know, own it's like the Grim Reaper. You're like if Netflix come around and say I'm spot you go, no, no, no. And then they start the music and then they start the cameras and then you're going, No, yeah, yeah. they're gonna crash, they're gonna crash. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it, but the tread honestly, I'm so hooked on the treadmill. And hundred percent my next tri after Dragon's Back race, but say next year. It is going to feature big time in my training. I've always said... Sorry, dear I, listeners, about this. I'm going to Twitter on... <laughs> I've always said, I, although I do quite high mileage, my elevation ratio is never quite that two to one. So this is a real good way. I could, I think I did three and a half miles on the treadmill and nearly got 3,000 feet of elevation. So it's a good way I can claw that ratio back. What else did I do? I did a Lakeland 100 recce. Well, it actually could be a, a little 50 recce too, from Pooley Bridge to Horswater. It didn't quite make it all the Horswater. We went nine miles and then turned around. But what was really interesting, we started at six o'clock, so that was like race I time. wondered, yeah, I wondered why. I just thought you'd been working and then I couldn't <laughs> get over till then. Well, I was going to go over late, uh, sorry, early, and I put it out there in the group and Aaron said, I can go, but not until four o'clock. So I'm like... Okay, I'll go with four. And it worked out perfect, actually. We did a day. I actually worked for the day. And then we went to the lakes. Easier. So this was the test. I was wanted to really test in that zone to the mid to higher range of the easy zone, what that pace was on the Lakeland 100 course. And it was quite faithful, actually. I think going over Fusedale, it was probably a bit more aggressive elevation per mile than the whole course if you stretched it out. Um, and I worked out about a minute, just over a minute a mile faster on the course of I'm not too sure what I can take of that because it was only 18 miles, but we will see. I loved it. Uh, apart from I had three poos, Eddie, in 18 miles. <laughs> well, it's, I had a coffee. We went to Reghead Station, service station on the way, and I had a coffee. And I literally not really drank probably about two cups of coffee in maybe three months. And then I had some very fatty food and start to run. And that just destroyed me. Um, well, was, I don't have that much sympathy for you. What a stupid thing to do. <laughs> well, I thought... You know, when I'm going to the checkpoints, I'll be smashing the quiches and everything like that. I thought this, you know, this is what's going to happen actually on race day. But I uh, take away from the run was um, I just can't, as much as I love it, I can't drink coffee. I went out with Rex on Sunday. You said your weather was horrible. We had thunder, lightning, hailstones and poor Rex. He did not know what the hell. He'd never... He's okay with thunder and lightning, but he'd never, he'd never seen a hailstorm before. And for July, it was absolutely insane. It was like settling on the floor. Like yeah, snow. yeah, that yeah. Crazy. That was pretty interesting. I've been to the theatre too. I went to the Theatre Royal to see my super talented niece perform. She is part of a bunch of students that, I suppose they're studying, like maybe an apprenticeship up at the Theatre Royal and then to go off to be actors. Um, so this was their end of year oh, performance. Amazing. It was awesome. 
Yeah, yeah, you know, really low key sets, nothing like um, Phantom of the Opera. No, or Hamilton. she had to bring, she had to bring the performance. Yeah, 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 it was great. They're literally like a couple of feet away from you. What I found disconcerting when somebody was like literally right in your face, like we were front row, so two feet away, but then they were singing or talking. I really struggled to like look at them. <laughs> so I had to like look away. I felt it was really awkward. But yeah, that was also a real treat to see, you know, your family. But she's since I remember Erin's always performed. So to see her grow like this um, into a very talented young woman. Yeah, it was lovely. It was lovely to see. And podcast awards. I don't know if you saw this over on Facebook. I saw it. I couldn't, I couldn't get involved. It felt like something that you <laughs> would promote. <laughs> well, yeah, Jill Westwood, thanks for pointing out. I, I Obviously, I know there is podcast awards, but I didn't realise there was a thing that we could be voted for or we represented in. But yeah, it's like a listener's choice award. So yeah, if you'd like to share some love for the Tea and Trills podcast, Eddie, yeah. Do you, you will could, we get uh, to go to an award show and like all dress up and I could make an award <laughs> speech? <laughs> yeah, or I hope so. But... Or we'd lose and like on friends when they have to pretend with their faces that they go, <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Oh, it's super you. interesting. I literally know nothing. Women's about running. UK podcast. But yeah, it'd be great. And yeah, if people could vote for us. I typed in, you could literally type in any podcast. So there's some big hits okay. in there. You, know, you could you could like be able to get inside oh, a book yeah. thing. Gary, don't get your hopes up. You're gonna get your hopes up and dream big, Eddie. Dream big. <laughs> I know. I love... <laughs> dream big. I love it. But I'll pop the link in the show notes if anybody would love to vote for us we really appreciate that the deets for the week so yeah we are on tape uh, time and 69 miles so that's good 11,000 feet well of elevation I did a couple of core sessions and they do have a bit of like upper body work plank reaches that kind of thing quite a bit of mobility so I'm moving away from the heavy lifting in the gym core and mobility yeah, if anyone good. gets reads that for, or hears that and thinks, Gary, that would be my max week and it's your start of your taper, I'll give you my stats. It was about 22 miles, about 500 <laughs> feet, about three hours and about 10 minutes of yoga. <laughs> so just the yin, the yang. Let's just keep this real, guys. <laughs> I could be cursing that 69 miles come uh, Coniston on the 28th. Let's see. Let's see. You could Let's be, see. I wish I'd done more Deliveroo, a little less <laughs> lifting, a little more Deliveroo. <laughs> <laughs> that is not what I need. I do need any- <laughs> Nobody needs that. Nobody. Needs- That's why the, the laptop's quite high today because I'm just covering up the fact that I gained 20 pounds. <laughs> Last time, it was one time we went to the lakes with the family talking about downloading apps. We were driving there and I downloaded the Domino's Pizza app and ordered en route to the Domino's Pizza where Andy Burry was sitting outside, picked up our tea <laughs> and then carried on to the lakes. You winning. That is a winner's move. I love yeah. it. Winning. Winning at life. No brew with the coaches this week. It's coming, guys. We need to organise it. But uh, we're busy. We're busy people. It's totally my fault. But we'll get on it next week and it will be back because I know loads of people love it. So still time. If you haven't sent in a question in your Patreon and you want to ask our esteemed coaches a question, do it. We will be recording next week. Definitely. By the way, Russell, Trish and Rebecca, when you're listening, I'm, we're recording next week. I'll yeah, have you next. told them that? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this week, we chat to the not only really fast, strong and record-breaking Andy Berry, but also whew, super nice, down-to-earth, sort-of-the-earth sort of guy. I can imagine his kettle is always on if you fancy a chat. Really enjoyed getting to know Andy, and I hope our paths cross one day. Here's our chat with Andy Berry. Seventy-eight. English Lake District Peaks in 23 hours, 23 minutes. My knees hurt, just reading that, completing it uh, 22 minutes quicker than the previous record holder, Kim Collison, who also happens to be your coach. Welcome to the Tea and Trails podcast, the one and only Andy Berry. Hi, it's nice to be here. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm uh it, it's actually it, it's taken us a little while to put this all together, so you know I'm uh, I'm, I'm back into training mode now. So it's <laughs> yeah, it's kind of uh... this is good though. This is good. We like it like this because you may have done a couple of other podcasts, a bit of time for reflection. You've really toned those, and then we go really deep into the real nitty gritty, and you're just ready to really dissect it. Yeah, well, it's all fully settled in, hasn't it? Now, so it's kind of the memories have flattened out, and you, you, you're not you haven't just got that big pile on of emotion 
questions that you've got but when you first. We do like that. We do love do the big. We need to <laughs> next time, maybe if you're going to do another mega one, can we get you like the day after oh, wow. and just? <laughs> I love that. Just weep. Just share a Zoom of just crying and. <laughs> I'll pop up yeah. at the bottom of the fell. I'll be there with my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first question we ask all of our guests is, "Where are you? What's the view from your window? And have you been for a run today?" Today I'm sat in a Costa car park because I decided to uh, leave the building site to uh, not get disturbed. So I've got a Domino's, a Costa and a One Gym out my window. I know where you're at. I've got the big three there. Got the big three. <laughs> the big three. <laughs> but you know, it is a rest day. So the Domino's and the Costa, I mean, they're pretty... Pretty. So, no, I haven't been for a run today. It's uh, Monday, so it's a rest day today. I know exactly where you're at, Andy. That triangle of information, I can, I'm can. i pretty sure you're at Thinford Roundabout. I am, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly where I am, yeah. Sweet. Well, I'm, obviously, you're not too far away from me, actually, just down the road. Um, I, love, I live in Wingate. You obviously around the Thinford area. Lots of events over the Lake District. I'm in uh, various parts of the country in the mountainous parts. What would be your local trails? Yeah, where would you... Get some elevation unless you're jumping in the van. Hampstead Forest. Hampstead Forest's my main yeah. my main haunt for big tracks and and some lumpy stuff. You know, in a standard two, three hour run, I can probably get six or seven hundred meters. So it's not mm. great. Unless I like sit and go up and down a mount like up yeah. and down a little yeah. hill, but you know, it's where, where's the fun in that? Round the riverbanks in Durham, I quite enjoy it. We kind of look at my training over a 14 day period. So I've kind of got Hill time in there, flat time, and I also have a treadmill in my utility room. So uh, quite a lot of, of treadmill. We were treadmill just talking about treadmills. What, yeah, what's your what's your treadmill choice workout? Is that for flat speed or hills or mainly hills? So we'll do um in the run up to the twenty four hour in particular. I don't know whether you want to do this in any order, but I'll go with no, it. No, so. we just go we go organic. Yeah, so, so in the run up to the twenty four hour, like the specific part just beforehand what we did was we'd do big sessions of say 45 minutes at 15 percent and just keeping the heart rate just below threshold so for me that's 177 beats a minute so i'll just sit at 177 beats a minute for 45 minutes five minutes off 45 minutes on five minutes off 45 minutes on and just but fueling at the same time. Yeah. So I just, just sit there with a the big stack you're, like, you're just tapping it out. You're almost like, it's comfortable, but it's not quite comfortable. It, yeah, it's it, yeah. It, it's not uncomfortable enough yeah. that you, as long as you're fueling it, you can keep doing it. And it's really difficult to do that on a trail. So in a way, I actually, mm. it's horrific and it's horrible. It ticks such a massive box yeah. in my yeah. brain. Yeah. Where this is such good specific training. You know, even if I went and lived in the mountains, I still think I'd probably have a treadmill. I do the set. I do exactly that session. I live in the Alps, but I do a ton of work on my, especially in the winter when I can't get out of that. Like my threshold's a lot lower. Mine's 155. But I sit at between 150 and 155 <clears throat> and I just hold it there. And it's like, this is, this is an uncut, but it's so good for the strength. It's such a strength, mental and physical yeah. session. And then when I put that onto the trail, I find I can run almost anything on the trail. I feel like I'm, my legs are really strong, almost stronger than like my heart and lungs. It really strengthens my legs as well. And as you say, it's that it, it's that bit in the head as well. It's that, okay, I can knock out this. I can just find my rhythm. And just the legs will just do what they're told, mm, like mm. which is what hill climbing go. is, isn't it? It's like you can't look up at the top; you've just got to stay in that moment that you're in, and the top and trust will come. that it's going to end. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it will. And sometimes on a treadmill, it feels like it's it never going to. You're like, like no, 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 <laughs> that was three minutes. I've been here for three hours. I quite like watching the same programs. So I've got like a telly in front of the treadmill. I'm a massive. I, I, I love like the Alpinist free solo like documentary films like that and so i know them off by heart which means that i can almost judge how much further i've got to go <laughs> from where i am in the in the in the documentary <laughs> i need to oh, my treadmill yeah, game it's... this is great we're gonna andy we should be training partners i do the same but i watch like the sally mccray like western time youtube film seen it yeah, yeah. but i just put it on and i know all the bits i'm not even really watching it because it's too much no. sweat yeah 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 like, just, you, like you're not listening but you just know it's almost like a familiarity isn't it like yeah. okay for you it'll be like me and sally are in this together <laughs> for me it's like oh god mark andre has gone missing oh, no. oh, 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 oh. 
<laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> oh, let's rewind a little bit. Oh, can uh, I ask one question? Sorry, where does the 15% come from? Is that relative to the challenges that you're doing? That's the maximum incline that my oh, treadmill yeah. will go at. <laughs> Gary was asking me earlier, this is why we're so excited, because he was saying, like, what percentage? And I was like, you just whack it up, Gary. Just go as steep so as that. It kind of depends. So, like, when we're doing shorter reps where speed matters, yeah. I'll 5%. drop it down to 10 because oh. you get a little bit higher quality on the speed. Oh, I wish I could run fast at 10. I'm going to crank mine still. up when I go next time. And you can, yeah, so you can get a bit better quality on the speed. One of my favorite ones is Kim will kind of say, okay, we want to do five minute reps at RPE 8. You mess around with the incline and the speed. Do what you want, but I want an RPE 8 five minutes at a time. And that's quite good fun because then I can say, with that one, I'll often start at, say, 3 or 5% quite fast and then kind of drop the speed and increase the incline as we go up but keep in the RPE. And I, I quite enjoy those sessions. Yeah, Many I'm people sold. would say that was quite enjoy and uh, <laughs> 8%, 10% wouldn't go in. But go with, with, I love the treadmill chat. Can we remind a bit, um, Andy, and go how you found yourself on the treadmill? Go, can we go right back? You've always been a runner what no uh, no okay there's a story here no. so well well kind of yes yeah. so like when we were kids me and my sister were taken to the lake district by my mum camping and hiking and kind of the outdoors was very it was where my mum was the best version of my mum without a doubt that kind of probably stayed with us but then both me and my sister kind of drifted away from the hills once we teenagers and things and i was so i was mad into my football i was home and away at newcastle oh. i played it on a sunday you know, I was just, I, I lived and breathed football. And then I kind of reached that age where, you know, I was getting fat. So then I would go, do a half marathon and then I'd get slim again. And then I'd get fat again. <laughs> and I call like it my Ricky phase. <laughs> That's I, exactly I, I my story. My phase. So I basically like finish, finish whatever I was doing and then just pile it back on again with ice cream and beer. Yeah. And then go, oh no, I'm fat again. I better do something. <laughs> and then, and then, but uh so then ultra running came from, I was sitting in the pub before Newcastle game and everything seemed like a good idea after, after a few pints. <laughs> and, uh, and my mate said, have you ever heard of ultra marathons? I said, no, I haven't, but you know, keep talking, my friend. <laughs> and he's, uh, he said, oh, I really want to raise some, uh, some money for charity that helped my mum out. There's a ultra marathon from Carlisle to Newcastle called the wall, 69 miles. Would you do it with me? Sure. Yes, yeah, sounds like a great Check idea. Yes. Credit cards out, so let's sign up here, here yeah. and now. Woke up the next morning like, oh, God, I'm not sure I have to do that. <laughs> and then in the process of training for that, my uh, my sister had started fell running with Durham Fell Runners, and she was like, you should come along. I think you'd really love it as a part of your training for your ultramarathon. I think it would be great. I was like, well, why not? Went along to that. And they were just super friendly and it was just such a nice group. So I started going training with those those guys every week. And then that led into doing Fairfield Horseshoe in 2015. That was just like, where's this been all my life? You know, moving through the hills, running down hills. It's like crazy. And it was it was almost instant. It was almost a connection that I didn't know I didn't have. But as mm. soon as I had it, I was just head over heels. That's That's what I wanted to do. Got introduced to the Bob Graham round that October and then driving home from from that October 2015, I was like, yeah, next summer I'm doing one of them and never kind of look back off that really. <laughs> but do you look back though? Sometimes I look back at my life when I was going to football. I'm red and white though, Andy, sorry. Um, and watching Sunderland play this home. This interview's away. over. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think, where would I find the time to physically go to the matches when come the weekend... I just want to be in a car or a van and, and and off to the lakes. It just seems like I can't believe that was part of my life. I guess I, I kind of look back at it as very much the road I've walked is the road has led me to where I am now. I used to love going to the football. That was very much then. And you've always got to make a choice. We've all got 24 hours in the day. That's all we've got to play with. Yeah. And what you choose to do with that 24 hours is really important. Do I feel that I make more wholesome choices with my time now in terms of making a better version of, of Andy. Yes. That doesn't mean I don't, I, I regret anything I did then. I, I used to have great crack with my mates out, out playing football and watching football. I'm still super close with all those guys now. They're still, they're still there for me when I need them, but I definitely feel more alive now. 
Oh, 100%. I would say. Okay, yeah, Andy, you are local to me, just down the road. But I know you're not a member of a local running club. I'm a Sedgefield Harriers uh, club member. We'd yeah. love to see you in a blue and white vest, Andy. Cross-country Harrier League. You'd be more, you'd be more than welcome. You'd you'd actually bring our team up quite a lot <laughs> on the Harry Lee. But yeah, why Keswick? I know you remember Keswick AC. What took you over to the West Coast? Well, we should we should chat because I think I'll probably get second claim for uh, for cross country. So uh, oh. I, I'd because uh, I I don't get over and race race cross country with Keswick. If, uh, if that's something you want to talk about, then we should uh, yeah, we, we, we yeah. can talk about that. Um, so at the time that I moved clubs, I was working up in Scotland. And Keswick training was on the way home on a Thursday oh, night, see. but because of COVID and everything, it just never kind of kind of worked out for me. But you know, there is it has brought me on as a as a runner moving clubs, I guess, because there's something about chasing, talking to, warming up with, cooling down with like the best fell runners in the country. Basically, yeah. they're just they're super friendly again once you get past the <laughs> you're not you're not local. <laughs> but, uh, but no, they're a super friendly bunch. And just that knowledge and training with and racing against, it was definitely just, just another little stepping stone towards basically shifting myself from a, a best of the rest to, yeah. to to being able to attempt things like, like the 24-hour. You become friends with, just naturally with the people that you end up kind of starting and finishing around the same pack in, in a race. So, yeah, if you're over at Keswick and obviously you're a high-function athlete, you're going to be surrounded by, like, some of the best in the country over there. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Okay, we'll move on to the 24-hour record. Why? I've, I've looked into it. I remember I was in uh, Grasmere and I saw the plaque on the wall in Grasmere. It was actually the weekend you were doing your attempt and I was reading it and it's it's a pretty tough, just the whole concept of the record. Like, say with the bob, you can go for record, but you can still walk away with the bob. You don't get the record there's that's it there's, it's there's no second place in, in effect what why that record what was it because it was so tough it, it drew you to it well you've got to remember the bob was originally the lakes 24 hour record that's yeah. you know like that's that's that was its origins and it's got more popular as the years have rolled on and and things so i did the steve par round which is every wayne right over 2500 feet in 2021 and after that i sat down and said to myself right i can be one of two runners really well one of three runners i could stop running or i can uh i can go around picking off races that i know i've got a really good chance of winning and i could pick off records or fkts that i know i've got a good chance of breaking but is that ultimately going to lead me to being 100 percent happy with my efforts when I'm too old to be challenging to do any of this stuff, or would I rather at that point be looking back and going, you gave your everything and missed the biggest, baddest records that you can see? And the answer was yes. I would rather have put everything, my all, everything on the line, go for the biggest things you can see and fail than go for what I deemed slightly lower records and succeed. I mean, fortunately for me, it all came off and I get to go, holy, 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 holy crap, I, I, I actually did it. Sounds like you don't have much fear of failure. Would that be correct? I, I, I'm a massive fan of uh, like Steve Steve Magnus, Brad Stolberg, like that kind of philosophy where, where you break it down, you kind of like go, well, this isn't actually going to change who I am. You know, like fundamentally, I'm still going to be me the people who love me are still going to love me for being me and whether i have got the lake district 24 hour record or not isn't going to alter that yeah there's some randoms on instagram who won't follow you but truly do they matter <laughs> no not really like on the grand scheme of things like i'm not in it to to have a hundred thousand followers on instagram yeah, yeah. great I, I love it when people love looking at my photos but it doesn't alter who i am i don't value myself upon it so i guess i would say that it's no different to somebody doing a bob graham if their starting point is i don't know whether i could do a bob graham or not then that's exactly the same starting point as i don't know if i could do the lake district 24 hour record and then putting your all in and working your best and doing all the little things that you can do and putting the, the hard graft in when it's not easy and then succeeding, it doesn't matter what the challenge is. You know, for some people, that's a five or a 10K. Like, and that's awesome. Like, that's amazing. Like, they're just as successful as I am. Just their challenge was different. And, you know, it, it, too many people build these things up as, oh my God, like, I could never do that. Well, why not? 
what what in your life is stopping you and for some people that might be i just can't move fast enough over the terrain or i can't do haven't i can't put the time in i've got other commitments and that's fine that's not a, a bother but it is only the same thing I keep referring to Mark Lathwaite when he said not everyone has to do the 100, Lakeland 100, the 50 is enough. Can you tell us a little bit more about the challenge, Andy? Uh, is there a set route? Where do you start? Where do you finish? Yeah, is all, sure. So, tell us a little bit. People are going, well, what is this? Can I have a go? Tell me the route. So, yeah. So, the Lake District 24-hour record is a fairly simple concept. You've got to start and finish in the same place. You've got to cover the same tops summits as the previous record holder and then you have to add another one in or do it in a faster time the additions do have to come from a a certain list because there are stipulations about it has to be so far away from a previous summit you have to have dropped and climbed so far and things so there is a list but it's it's out there it's on the bob graham website the the lists you can do in you know it does take i guess a certain mixture of abilities so it, it, yeah, you know, I was going to ask, like, what's the terrain? What are we looking at for the like the terrain you're moving? So on? if you imagine, it, it, it is the skeleton of it is a Bob Graham, then just with a lot of additions. But the problem with the additions is they take you off what is now a fairly good trail on Bob Graham. You know, it's not, yeah. it's not mega rough anymore, really, anywhere. So you've got everything from ankle deep, boggy, boggy wet sections in the northern fells to nice rough rough terrain over crinkle crags you know you, you get a bit of everything really it does have a lot more climb than a bob graham and it is another 30 30 miles on top so yeah so it totaled out at about 90 94 miles with 12 and a half thousand meters of climbing so it's fairly lumpy how did you go about preparing that did um you mentioned earlier that kim collison is your coach did you uh approach him were you working together already when you thought of this idea or because he was the record holder did you think this guy knows his stuff I'm gonna <laughs> no so with. yeah so after i had that like kind of epiphany of I, i'd like to i'd like to do this i thought well my partner jess was already coached by him and she was giving him rave reviews and i was like well he's he's the record holder and he he seems like a pretty damn good coach so i said oh i'm interested in being coached by you can we go for a cup of coffee and he's like yeah yeah sure so we met up for a cup of coffee he's like so what what are your goals and i went so i'd quite like to go at the paddy buckley followed by the legs 24 hour record and at that point he also had the paddy buckley record <laughs> yeah so he, he, he kind of took a drink of coffee and kind of went so you want me to coach you to try and break my records and i kind of went in my head it didn't sound as bad as that but that's basically what i'm asking yeah that's yeah. That's, that's 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 how that's going to go and he he's been awesome like he just kind of laughed and, and and we cracked on i bet he loved it i mean i i the re- all these running records you only have them you don't have them forever they're just yours to hold for a little time yeah. and then you pass them on you don't really want to have them forever because you want you want to be thinking there's people out there grafting trying to beat me i love it though when when somebody does it so killian had a record or billy had it for ages and people thought that was on the table then killian got it and then finley got super close and it was like yeah wow it inspires people to push and push and push i love it yeah it's uh it, it, i guess it also helps so like so again so jess said imagine though he's had the record and then if he got somebody like you to break it then he'd be the best coach in the, in the game as well and i was like thanks jess China, thanks. just someone like you yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, i mean wow i mean fair enough if he got like finley wild to break it that would be fine but you i love it oh, i think she speaks some wise words so when you were in like the nitty-gritty we just had a lovely treadmill uh a treadmill chat what did like your sort of weeks looking for to prepare for an event like that do you do it much like you would sort of like a lakeland 100 training week is it much the same sort of principles yeah so we always have a rest day so mondays is my uh, are my rest days and then we'll have lots of easy running with normally we'll do strides on a tuesday a session on a wednesday and then easy run thursday easy run with strides on a friday and then either so when i've got my son um, normally we'll, we'll stop in Durham on Saturday morning. I'll do a big treadmill session 
and then we'll go drive over to the lakes and we'll go hiking or biking or whatever on the Saturday afternoon. So we're ticking off the Wayne rides, me and James, one by one. Brilliant. We'll get through yeah. them. How old is James? So he's nearly 12. So he's... Uh, is he so loving I bought, it? I got him a... Me, me and my mum went halves on a bike for him for his birthday last year and it's been the best addition to... Uh, mm. So he, we, we blast around Hamsley Forest and he's he'll, 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 he'll happily get up to about 15, 20 miles now. So <laughs> gets me off the treadmill for those long runs. Does he take on some of those routes or Hamsley is lethal, some of the mountain bike trails around there? No, so we stay off the trails because obviously I'm running and I'm not allowed to run them. Yeah. So we, uh, we stick <laughs> he does, to them. He doesn't know about them yet. The minute he realises there's like these jumps and stuff, he's going to be like, see ya, dad. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so we, we do lots of that and then uh, and then on those weekends I'll if we've been hiking say we'll hike again on the Sunday and then I'll come home and I'll do a top up run on the treadmill on the Sunday night and then the weekends when he's with his mum me and Jess will normally pile over to the lakes on the Friday and I'll get my mountain time in on the Friday Saturday Sunday maybe a bit of road biking mixed in there and things like that so yeah so to be honest fairly standard I guess mm-hmm. really yeah. you know you're so looking the at consistency consistency is there I'm a massive believer in that. Like I see, you know, I like to describe running as building a house. Each week is just another brick. And it's dull. It's not particularly exciting. <laughs> and sometimes you drive I, past the house and it's like, my, what have you yeah. been doing? And you're like, yeah. I'm still here, still chiseling. Yeah. One of my one of my biggest things I hate is people who chase all the little life hacks and all the things and ignore the fact that 99.9% of it is just turning up day after day listening to the body rest when you need to rest and just keep on churning it out week after yeah. week there is no one magic session there is no one magic long run no magic strength and conditioning exercise it's just turning up every yeah. single week and putting your brick in the wall yeah. and just and building it slowly it's the only way it and they don't the have to way. be a star workouts. We talked about this a few times on the podcast. There can be a few B minuses, some C pluses in there, and it's just that consistency, like you say. Just keep putting yeah. It. And sometimes you feel rubbish. Sometimes you feel rubbish, and your workouts are rubbish. But if the effort was there, yeah. So say if you're if you're looking for like an RPE eight session, it doesn't matter necessarily what the pace is, because if the effort's the same for two sessions, then the benefit coming out of the session is the same. Yeah, and if you push in the pace too far, and then it pushes the effort level too far, then you've changed the whole dynamic of the session. You've changed it from building your aerobic base to your anaerobic base, yeah. which you're trying to fit the window before you built the wall. You yeah. know, we've all had a shoddy builder in our life. You know, you've got to <laughs> you've got to build all the walls. Or and being actually, a shoddy I... builder. <laughs> 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 I very rarely like that RP8. I'm very careful at that where I put that in the plan and where I put it in the client's plans because you've got to get that right and you've got to get the duration of that right. It's got to be at the right point because actually we just have to tickle that. Um uh, especially if you've got a job, like you've got quite a physical job as well, like balancing your uh, your phys- the physical demands of your job as well as juggling a family and stuff, getting the combination all right. It's really hard. It's really difficult. interesting you mentioned the job. I-, I think that was a really key thing for me. I look at other people's training. So say people who are either have more relaxing jobs or desk-based jobs or whatever and they'll churn in 100 mile weeks and i'm like oh god i want to try and be an elite level athlete and i need to do 100 mile weeks until the moment i realized that actually i can class my six hours at work where my heart rate is elevated to 90 to 110 beats a minute for six hours that's yeah. actually zone one training hmm. that you know hmm. that's another 30 hours a week yeah i'm putting in that yeah nobody else sees it's not on strava and it's not on training yeah. peaks you should put it on Strava as yeah, a building every movie. day. <laughs> I'm the Coros, you know, just like, yeah, okay, what have you got? Yeah, and, and just that, that mentality switch that I think that a lot of people, you can always find a positive. It's one of the key lessons that I like to think of, of, of your job. Now, if I had a, did have a desk-based job, I'd be trying to go, okay, well, this is my recovery time. As long as I'm doing like little ankle stretches or whatever under the desk and or if I need to, move floors or whatever then i'll take the stairs and don't get the don't get the lift maybe miss a stair out 
there's always things you can do within your work because we spend, we all have to spend so long there that if you look at it negatively, it's going to impact you negatively. And I also, I think the same's true for if you have to do childcare for a long amount of time, you know, that's still, you're still active. You're still yeah. running around oh, chasing yeah. them and, 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 and sorting them. stuff out and, <laughs> Just you know, do Lego. Just do Lego, children. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so it's 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 how you approach these things is is definitely a, a can make a huge difference. I think. Don't give yourself excuses. Look 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 at how how you how you can use it as a positive. How did it? And obviously, you got the record. We know that. How did it we go? We broke that right at the top. Unfortunately, <laughs> we should have get kept that like maybe gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. See that as a, 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 a surprise. <laughs> but how did it go? You know, would you were you ahead, behind? Was it? Were you running scared? And also, I suppose I'm going to ask two questions in one. Do you think the 79th summit is possible? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the the answer to the second one is yes. Like I think that that that's been my it, from this run. That's what I've given to the round. I've given the time is now there for somebody to add in the seventy ninth. You know whether that's me or somebody else. We'll we'll, we'll see. But it's there. Thirty seven minutes is enough to add in Haycock, without a doubt. It's there. It just needs run run running now through the day. I, I decided to move the start point. So Kim started in Braithwaite. I moved it to Newlands after. You know, Fiona Pascal, when she did the, the women's record, okay. she started in Newlands. And it just makes total sense. Why why nobody's done it before it kind of baffles me a bit because the leg over... Takes, right. takes a woman to think <laughs> carefully about, right, where am I going to... Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, it's just looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes, isn't it? Sometimes. And I think that... I mean, I'd, I'd be tempted to move it the start again if I went again, I think. But well, anyway, that's by the by. So, yeah, so I started at Newlands because two reasons, really. One is... Kim went off like a rocket. Like his opening pace was was crazy fast. And to the point that the split on his leg won, I'd tried it, but the bow scale fell. I tried it like four times or something in training. And the closest I'd got was around about 30 seconds to it. But I was thresh like I was past <laughs> threshold. Like I was <laughs> redlining to try and do that. And I was just, it had rented space, rent free in my head. Like it was, it was living there just kind of, how can you do this? And you can't hit this one split. So I needed to move away from that so that we couldn't be compared directly. Because mm. of what I, I, I looked at it in terms of, well, I have 24 hours to do this far. I need to move on average at 4.2 miles an hour. That feels achievable rather than looking at individual splits and going, I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can yeah. do that. Um, so moving the start helped that. So the first leg, I was always going to make up some time because obviously that was his last leg and he was he was tired by then. And then it was going to be a game of limiting the damage over the next portion and seeing what we were left with. So that's pretty much how it went. Uh, stomach had a little wobble going down the Helvellyn Ridge, but nothing too bad nothing that couldn't be cured with a bit of bit of vegan sushi and making sure the water's Ooh. going in and then it was just a bit of a it was a bit of a battle the heat really kicked in climbing out of climbing out of Langdale up the back of Pike of Blisco it was it was like an oven it was, it was a hot day that I think it was the old county tops weekend if I'm correct yeah and yeah it, it was, was super hot yeah yeah what was your nutrition plan the beauty of these things is they're fully supported so you can have as much as you want and people are just right next year, hand over every 20 minutes, half an hour or whatever, whatever you want. I use the unflavored talk powder in bottles. And what I like to do is go and buy every different kind of fruit juice that I can find in the supermarket. And then we mix them half a half with water, two scoops of powder. So that gives you 30 grams of carb. So we try to do one of those an hour and then two or three gels an hour. And anything else I fancied in place of a gel, but... I'll be honest, I did pretty much the whole thing on gels. And did you? What's your gel of choice? Talk. I just, yeah. Just talk. Yeah. They're, okay, they're, they're, they're rhubarb, really rhubarb really and custard. All the flavours. All the flavours. All the flavours. <laughs> they've, they've, they've got this new cola one that's got caffeine and, and something else in it. And it's like absolute rocket fuel. You time one of them right, drop one of them. And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> You're a plant-based athlete though, aren't you, Andy? I'm correcting. So. Yeah. So what are the good, um, when I do the, these long days on the trails, I kind of live off peanut M&Ms and Mars bars and stuff and Snickers. But yeah, obviously that's not good if you're a plant-based athlete. If any of our listeners are out there thinking they want some vegan trail snacks, yeah, anything other than physical sports nutrition. Honestly, I am a massive sushi fan, like with, 
that you put it in a bag with soy sauce and it goes into a mush fair enough so it's not it doesn't look appealing but basically <laughs> it it's, sound got, great. <laughs> it, it, it's got rice soy sauce it's got yeah. it's salty rice basically with a bit of vegetables in there it's amazing i'm just wondering about that action though of like the eating the the mess then. Ah, we're fell, it's fell running in it it's fell trail running it's not you're not in it to be clean i know but it's just then i don't know if i'd cope with like the soy sauce then like down. Well, because it all just kind of absorbs into the rice. Okay. Make okay. like a little ball. It'd be great, right? Huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like rice balls. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I'm a vegetarian and I did try and go plant-based. Uh, I think it's trickier as well where I live is that the, uh, we're very limited on live in the middle of the Alps. Alternatives. Quite limited on yeah. Alternatives is very limited, though the French are turning around a little bit. But I found it very hard to get enough calories and enough protein into a plant-based diet. How if people perhaps might be listening, wanting to go down the vegan route or perhaps down the vegan route, how do you manage that like day? As well, you've got a really physically demanding job. How do you manage that day to day? I mean, the first point is you never see a gorilla asking how much protein it gets. Exactly. No. 100%, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <People speak. laughs> um, like, and I guess... With me, with the diet, is you look, you can be an unhealthy vegan and you can be a healthy this is vegan. It. Yeah, you can be see, a healthy meat eater. It, and you can be you? an and unhealthy like... meat eater. For me, it's kind of a, it's almost a, like, it's overthought. Like, it's massively overthought. Like, if I was eating meat and dairy, I would still really be conscious of what I was putting into my body. Just because you have the ability to go to, I know that you don't. But so, like, a lot of people who ask me, you're kind of like, oh, you know, like, how do you get your protein? What, if I went to McDonald's twice a week, all of a sudden I'd be healthy. Like, it, 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 it baffles me sometimes. You know, my diet's really standard. Like, I wake up in the morning, I have two pieces of toast. And fair enough, I'll stick nut butter and a banana on them. My main meals will have, you know, beans, lentils, or, or, or an alternative, like a chicken-based alternative, you know. But they're, they're really standard meals. And yeah. so many people who eat, meat and dairy still use protein shakes say there's vegan alternatives to protein shakes you know i use huel so it's kind of like well huel's got 30 32 grams of protein 400 calories well yeah i mean ideal just bang bang one of those in when you're when, when you're feeling feeling low you know it's what does it yeah, taste I, like I, though I, I i see it on my facebook and i think oh, huel's lush Feels right, amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't use the shaker though. Like they send you a shaker. The shaker's rubbish. Just put it in like a blender. Yeah, and, and it's quite cheap. Again, um, we are not endorsed or promoted uh, promoting Hewlett at all. But I think their pound their cost per meal is pretty cheap. So sometimes, yeah, yeah I worry yes. if you look at these pro- protein shakes and stuff like that. It can seem quite expensive. Well, I think Hewlett value for money seems seems okay and if you compare you know it's it's not like you're just buying that you're actually replacing a potentially a not so nutritious meal with it and then if you weigh up cost for cost then fuel looks at least pretty good yeah yeah so again i'm not endorsed by fuel either like i don't i don't should I, I be don't. andy you should be <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I i but we've got a subscription so it just comes in the post in a big sack and then just make it up as you need it kind of thing because because i'm self-employed then time is money when i am at work i do i get you know i'll have one at 10 one at two and then go home i don't really eat solid food during the day so. oh, that, sound, that's, Ooh, that doesn't do sound that. so good i'd have to, I'd, have to I'd be sad without my little plate i my little sandwich and chopped up apple at one o'clock <laughs> oh, i'll tell you what is amazing though i'm a massive fan of chopped up apple with some peanut butter on it oh. i tell you what you can't you can't go wrong with that can you and no. i always look at it i like chop my apple up for myself because i spend so so much time cooking for my kids and the rest of the family that when I do like a little apple myself, a little fancy apple, I'm like, treat yourself, Eddie. Here you go. <laughs> go for it. Yeah. Like, go Sit there with it. a spoon go and the peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> and peanut butter. Banana for me. Peanut butter and banana. Oh, and man, yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Man, that's the one. Love it. How, how do you get a team together? Obviously, for someone like me, it's relatively easy to find people of a similar pace, but yeah, when you're shooting for records, is there like a little, it's like Fight Club or something. Don't tell, don't talk about Fight Club. <laughs> have you got like some like crack WhatsApp group with them? Um... Gary wants to be added if you have, just so he can watch it. <laughs> well, <laughs> That'd be too again, like, so, so yeah, so we've got like, a, the, the, there's a, there's a Keswick men's group. So there's that. And then Gary, obviously. Gary, the Keswick men's group. I have to change <laughs> clubs. You know, I'll do that. You know, there is a Keswick women's group as well. Like if you, but obviously I'm not a woman, so I'm not a part of the Keswick <laughs> women's group. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have some friends who are, who are really good runners, you know, like, you know, Kim's obviously going to come out and 
and I'm, I'm friends with Damien Hall and things and he came out to play so but then even people from 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 local you know like they they all turned out again people get the first two legs in particular you need fast runners like there's yeah, no yeah I'd be like Andy the last few hours I'm your woman I can yeah. tough talk and get you up there but exactly. I'm not coming out on leg one not yeah. coming out on leg one so like leg, leg one and leg two where you're moving at like five miles an hour through the mountains that's that's a quick pace but by the time you're getting onto leg three that's dropping down you know the lads there cope well and then again as you're moving on the pace drops down to a lot more manageable level and, and did jess come out did jess come out and run any she did all my road support so oh, oh, she's, uh, oh, she's, what uh, a she's, a, she, she's she's a bit of a legend with road support she's uh so she's an ultra runner herself she's done lakeland 100 three times completed plus other other races so she knows me she knows the game she's she's well organized is she, you said three times is she going to go and do going to go for the slate so she's not it's as i say she's had real trouble with with uh plantar and and all sorts for the last last 18 months or so oh, she's goodness. also just finished her phd so that was that was pretty brutal in the last year for her. That sounds intense. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so, but she's she's coming. We we went running together this weekend, which was a as I say, oh, it was a major the best. Ma- 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 major milestone. Was actually putting running gear on and uh, and, and <laughs> getting out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Getting her so. hand in the sushi bag again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. And uh, and it is vital to have that that trust in your support team. I always say when I start, there's no more pressure on me. I'm running. I love running. I yeah. love running in the yeah. hills. I love being in the hills. Any problems now? That's her problem. She needs to deal with that. And being able to hand that off to somebody that you completely trust, even on the day, proved vital. So coming into Wasdale, I thought I was done. I was doing the maths in my head, and I was like, I'm behind. I know I'm behind Kim's splits. I knew 79 was out the window. That was definitely yeah, okay. gone. So I said to Damien, I was like, look, run ahead. I want Kim and Jess. So Kim was waiting to do the next leg. Just tell me. Tell me if it's over and it's time to get in the car or tell me that it's doable so I need to move on. And I ran in and I was like, I just need Jess to tell me straight up. And I just looked her in the eye and she went, you can do it, but you got to go now. And I was, and I was like, crying on a bit like i was like you know was like, i've got nothing else in the legs i was yeah. like i'm not making up any time she's like it's two how, minutes how, you can what, do what it. point of this was it what point how many um hours were you in so i must have had it must have been about uh, 19 deep something like that yeah. yeah and i was two minutes behind kim's splits coming into wasdale it's nothing um, did it seem massive though as you came in like yeah I like just... it it felt like the legs were empty and i was mm. done so then we had a cut off to try and add in the extra top of Haycock on that leg, and the cut off was quarter to seven, I think, and we came past it at about quarter past seven, so we were like half an hour down off where okay. I needed to be to add the extra top. But then I had a word with myself on the side of you, Barrow, because I was moaning. I was like, "Why am I here? Why am I doing this?" <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, it's just war. like my easy recovery runs. Why? Proper <laughs> woe is me. And then I were, they, the, were you exter- the, were you were you externally mourning or was that all in yeah 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 so I was like I was mourning <laughs> like I was proper mourning like only probably probably only for about like five or ten minutes okay. but then but then I caught myself doing it and I had this proper moment I was you know the bit where there's the little stream as you first start up you barrow yeah and there's this little stream and I threw down my poles and I washed really? my face washed my hands <laughs> washed my neck slapped myself across the face and I went <laughs> this isn't you. I was like, this isn't you. You love mountain running. Yeah. And I kind of like, I'm a massive like film nerd. So I was kind of like, you know, so I went full full Lord of the Rings and went, you know, <laughs> if this is going to be my end, I'm going to make it such an end that it's going to be worthy of remembrance. And I picked the sticks up and I was like, right, Fantastic. okay, here we go. <laughs> and then, and that was it. Like another, another lease of life. And I had my two minutes by Red Pike. And then by the time we got round to Great Gable, Kim just turned around and said, this is your round again. Go and get it. And and that's what we did. We absolutely stormed the last bit. I think I took thirteen minutes out of the last leg, which is only five miles from from Honiston in Newland. So, oi, oi, oi. that's brilliant. Yeah, we were we were cooking by the end. Awesome. Resurrection it, Andy, yeah. that's what we call it. Resurrection yeah. <laughs> Andy, that's a good film. That's a good film title, isn't it? A bit scary. That's the sort of thing that I'd see come up on my videos to watch, and I'd go, no, 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 no. Not <laughs> Would you do it again? 
yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 100%. It's just where, where to fit it in. And what, what does this goal alter with other goals? It's kind of... What okay. do you mean by that? So I ran the first 100 kilometres of the 24-hour record, which is equivalent to a Bob Graham, in about 14 hours. Okay, well, how fast can I do a Bob Graham? Okay, it's I the, see, It's yeah. the instant question in my head. So, because like my fastest time is my winter round from 2017 of 1841. It's like, okay, I, I could take a good chunk off that. So I guess there's that question, you know, I, I narrowly missed the Paddy Buckley last year with a, with a nav error in it. So that's a possibility. Do I take a support team and go? Cause I did a solo and support. No, sorry, a solo support at Ramsey. I had a bag at. I had a bag stuffed in a hedge at uh, at halfway. Yeah. So I have to say it was supported. So yeah, I did a solo Ramsey last year. So do I go go back and take a support team to the Ramsey and see what we can do with that? There's Maybe loads of challenges, loads of stuff. Yeah, and, and so it's just uh, okay. Well, what order can we do these in, and how? How best does it seem to fit? What a lovely position to be in. Yeah, absolutely. It's just so exciting, right? It's just like, oh, stay fit, yeah. stay healthy and just keep having a go. But I've got a bit of trail time. So I've got Lakeland 100 and then I've got, I'm into the ARC as well, the ARC 100 in February next year. Oh, so, awesome. Let's have some Smackdown talk for Lakeland 100 then. Andy, Gary, oh, you're on the start line. <laughs> what are you looking for, Andy? Gary's I'm looking gonna, for I, a sub-30. I'm going to mark Gary for as long as I can and then... Uh, You're and having then a bad day, Andy. You're on a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> who's, on, who's on the sharp end, though? Is Mark Derbyshire there again this year? Uh, I don't think so. He's racing the Iger, isn't he? He's racing yeah, the Iger 100, is, so yeah. that's... It, it, I it's assume, next week. That's Not cool. this weekend, next weekend, isn't it? I think Ryan Smith's in from America. Okay. He's pretty nippy. Uh, and then there's a master versus apprentice uh, battle looming because Kim's coming to play. So, oh, that's super fun. exciting. <laughs> um, and then there's always people who I, I, I haven't actually looked through the start list. That's just who I've been told. Yeah. So there'll be plenty of people who've trained super hard and are super safe. There'll be an Ali Bailey turning up who can just jog around with yeah, broken legs. Yeah, yeah. He did. He hurt himself pretty early on and he. Um, he put in a stunk and from same as me. I, I I'd love to do quite well in the V fifty category, but I've no idea who's torn the line. Unfortunately, that goddamn results based website, I can't filter out the V fifty, so I can't see. Who, I can't see who's. I need to know the name, um, but obviously, I just want to go click V fifty. But I can't I'll just do that. keep. I'll just. I'll, as soon as you start, I'll get it all filtered down, Gary. And- Anybody who looks a bit uh, haggard, I'm going to be asking them how old they. <laughs> So yeah, but I mean, for 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 me, I'm only going to concentrate on having a. I've never run a hundred mile trail race, so oh. it's going to be. And this is quite runnable. Um, I think but, the, the elevation ratio is like that two to one classic. So yeah, for someone like yourself, anyway, there'd be most of that will be runnable. Yeah, which which provides its own challenges because obviously I've trained to march up rough, much steeper, rougher climbs. Yeah. So, Add a lot of running in and so I've got to be careful with that. I'm very aware that, that 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 can have damage. But but yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, like I expect to have a good day and a good day for me, I expect to probably put me if I get round and I have a good day, I expect to be in the top five, I would say. But a lot can happen in a hundred miles. There is literally nothing taken for granted. And yeah. So goal number one, get it under twenty four hours. Goal number two, win it. Goal number three, see how close to Mark Darvish's course record you can get. As I say, it could all go really wrong by <laughs> by day of rain, you know. There's absolutely nothing. The weather could be horrific. The weather could be amazing. It's just too many, too many yeah. things. But I'm gonna go and go and give my best. And as long as I can look in the mirror afterwards and say I race my hardest and I race sensibly, then I'll be happy with the result, whether that's first or tenth. I think just by this 50 minutes we've had a chat, I think you're going to race with a smile on your face, Andy. You might have a little pity party, but then you'll do your Lord of the Rings moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Resurrect yourself. I'm never going to forget that. I often do that and I throw down my poles and I go, no, no, I'm not. No, we need a speech, not- Eddie. We need a speech. <laughs> I need a speech now. I need to. I've not watched Lord of the Rings. I've just started Star Wars with the kids. So maybe a bit of uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi That's might a lot be. Of Jeopardy, yeah. Lord of the Rings. Cool. Oh, I've loved this, Sandy. Thanks for your time today. But at the end of every show, we ask all our guests some quick the five deep, so questions. We get them yeah. in and we, they, they think they're our friend. Um. And then we just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question one. You've got, well, I say one year to train. 
you can have as many years as you want, but what FKT or challenge would you like to have a shot at anywhere in the world? And you're guaranteed to get an entry. Yeah, oh. entry or the FKT. Yeah, if it's like a um, some trail I'd go over in the rock. states, I'd go. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd go to Hard Rock probably. I think Hard Rock 100. I think that would be a, just a great experience all round, and would probably suit me well. See, yeah, like those checkpoints that are so high up, and they're on like the little knuckles on the mountains. Yeah. And that would be, I'd like to just be at those checkpoints. I'd love to have the power to actually make these this happen. That's, that's such an awesome <laughs> challenge. But hard rock is super hard. My goodness me, to get in. Okay, Eddie and I, bang on your door. Uh, we don't want a Domino's for tea, but what would be your signature dish? What are you going to cook us? Um, Probably lasagna. <gasps> Classic. Are you a corn or like a veggie vegetables? There's a one called Beyond, Beyond Mince. So we normally, we'll, what, what, what we do is do multiple layers. We'll roast up a load of like courgettes and aubergines and things like that. So then we'll do kind of vegetable layer, meat layer, pasta layer. And then we'll layer it up like that. And then the cheese sauce on homemade garlic bread. Yeah. Sounds like a YouTube oh channel. Oh my God. I am. I'm moving in. <laughs> not just coming for dinner. I'll do the washing up. <laughs> <laughs> what would be your guilty TV pleasure? Guilty? I don't know why it would be guilty. <laughs> well, well, I've I mean, got some. <laughs> my, my, my guilty pleasure is anything on the cooking channel or below deck on Netflix. There you go. See, pretty... we, oh, the problem is we, just, we, we don't watch that much telly. I guess just watching the same thing, watching The Alpinist again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> like, I must have watched that. I must have watched that documentary about 30 or 40 times. Like it's, uh, So, yeah, guilt, guilty-wise... Jess will walk past the treadmill and be like, oh, shock horror. It's the Alpinist. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay, would you rather travel back to the past or maybe go to the future? Nah, I'd, I'd, I'd stay exactly where I am. I'd, I it's about it. the journey. It's not about it's not about skipping stuff out or trying to do stuff again. It's about, about appreciating where you are and making the most of that. Such you a, a wise answer. I'd totally yeah. go to the future, get the lottery numbers, get right back. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say so much about us, Eddie. <laughs> Do you have a dog, Andy? Got two, yeah. Got a border collie who's seven or eight, and he's the he's the angel, and we've got the lovable mistake that's uh, that's three and also a border collie. <laughs> See, that sounds like a full of energy. You've got to tire out with collie, my goodness me. They are oh, bless her. She's, no, she's just full of anxiety. She was an accidental Aww. COVID dog, like so. It, there's a whole a whole bunch of reasons why she 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 is how she is, but she is wired. Is probably the best. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like my best description for little Lily. Uh, and is, are the dogs allowed on the bed? That's the question. No, no, no they're dogs. They're not doggies. <laughs> they're dogs. <laughs> oh, I'd have Rex on the bed in a heartbeat if he was allowed. No, they're not allowed on the not, furniture. Uh, they're not allowed on the furniture. They're not allowed. Oh anywhere. my they're, goodness they're, me! <laughs> their place is on the floor. Oh, oh, see, I was watching the TV last night, and I had twenty minutes for the Rex, and I just felt. All the worries and the stress just release. Would it be any difference if you just got a cushion and sat on the floor, though? I could go on the floor with a dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, it's the same thing. I still do the same thing. It's just I choose to go to the dog and don't let the dog come to me. Uh, yeah. oh, I, have to, I have to sit on the edge of the sofa because the dogs are like this on the sofa. <laughs> And yeah, no. uh, I'm like, what's this? How has this happened? <laughs> I don't and I'm like, oh, I can you get it. off? I'm I like, can, can you get off? It, it, you get it, off? It, and they're like, we can't hear. We it, don't know. It happened saying. the moment you said, oh, come on, we'll just let them up. And they're really cute and small and a puppy. I'm a softie. Okay, last mind. question. We ask all of our guests every week. Sorry, we share the podcast on Instagram. We'll do an Instagram story and we'll pop a song to that story. But... We really can't guarantee kind. your song because often Eddie gets it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so there's but a yeah. German German metal band called Ramstein, and I'll start oh, yeah, going like with one of theirs, which is yes. which is Auslander. I think I'll go with Auslander. <laughs> Auslander, okay, go, okay. I oh, know Ramstein. Have you ever seen them live? Saw them last year in Coventry, and I'm starting my Lakeland taper with a trip to Berlin to go see them in two weeks. So. Oh, wow. Your ears might have just stopped ringing by the time. Yeah, uh... oh, man, it's so good. <laughs> so good. What a pleasure. What a joy. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, pleasure's all mine. It's been good crack. You're sitting in the hottest van. 
in the Domino's <laughs> car park. Yeah, maybe next time I'll try to organise it so I can get the day off, you know. But, uh, no. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Best of luck with Lakeland 100. You know, just give Gary a heart. Make his day by going, going, Yay. Gary. I'll get a selfie. I'll go, I'll, I'll, go I'll, I'll sneak up behind him. I'll go, are you the guy off that podcast? Can oh, I my God. He would actually pee his pants. He would like that would make his day. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do look forward to seeing you. Say hello if you see me, Andy. Be yeah, we'll do. And yourself, mate. And yourself. Just, uh, just boo all over. I sometimes get what Jess describes as race face, which she she says is something like this. <laughs> yeah. So if I've got Ooh, that face, I'm steel. not worried. Just, it, that, I'm in a perfectly good place. Just come over and give us a nudge, and I'll snap out of it. Do. We'll do. We'll do. <laughs> oh, you take yeah, care. Best of best of luck with that. Best of luck with the rest of the year, and keep in touch. Yeah, and you guys. Thank you. Bye. Andy, bye. bye. You looking forward to the Lake Island Hundred Showdown, then, Gary? Oh, that's not going to be any short. Andy, Andy, hi, Andy, it's me, it's Gary from the book. Oh, oh. I hope he has the day he deserves. He's super talented, super fast. You know, last year, Ali Bailey, Northeast runner, took the win. I'd love to say a lad from County Durham take the win at this year's Lakeland 100. My only thing I've got to say, Andy, you know, I know. I'm not too this sure. Is, we've got to mention it, though, <laughs> because we both slightly, we were disappointed in you, Andy, aren't we? I mean, it was all going so well. Yeah, he's not so keen on um, dogs coming up on the sofa. I'm... He's not so keen. He judged us, Gary. He judged us. <laughs> he left awkward pauses. He said... Who's the boss here? You or your dog? And me and Gary are both like, well, our dogs, Uh-oh. obviously. <laughs> Can't you get down on the ground with your dog? Uh, no. When he's a V50, he'll be beckoning that dog up on the sofa. Yeah, That's I was nice. like, what about your knees, Andy? A struggle on the floor. <laughs> and I was thinking about his, I'm sure I got it right. He mentioned a three yeah. times 45 yeah. minutes workout. And I processed that afterwards, just thinking that. I did two by 45 after I'd spoken to him. <laughs> yeah, but what was your effort? He was like RPE. I'm yeah, sure it's I'm RPE sure. eight. I went RPE like six. So I was like, yeah, yeah, I could do it well, six maybe. If you but... actually follow the RPE scale, an eight for 45 minutes, you couldn't do that for three 45 minutes, personally. But everybody interprets that scale differently. An eight to me is like a three minute effort. Yeah. Eight to nine is like max out. I couldn't do it. But, yeah, but it was super, that's an enormous, but that's why he's got Lake 100's 24 hour record. Strava. Oh, we have gone international again, actually. I don't, I'm not, I don't think I know. Should I? I didn't make the leaderboards this week <laughs> with my 400 feet. <laughs> no. We need a Deliveroo leader. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Shadi Kiptu, all the way from Kenya. Oh, I'd say awesome, actually. And it's nice to uh, see, Shadi, that we are keeping you company out on the trails. I hope he isn't a club collector. You get people who collect clubs over on Straw, but I hope he isn't. No, he doesn't he sound like he is. He sounds a real deal. Yeah, 93 miles. Well done. And Sarah Norman, Sarah, your Strava's locked down, so I can't really see what you've been up to. But 29 hours and 2 minutes and 44 seconds. And also, Sarah took the elevation win for the week, just over 29,000 feet. Now, I don't know Sarah normally, but I know she loves the Hardmores Race Series. So she would be pretty local to me. Yeah, I wonder what Sarah's got coming up. You don't I wonder, do That must be a race. That's got to be a race, surely. Well, it's a race, or maybe she's done like a little... Um, you know, weekend away, a training camp or something like that, maybe. Mega. Time in- <laughs> that's mega. Even for me, that, that's 29 Hey, out, Sherry, if you're listening, let us know what you're up to. Robin Cassidy took the win at the Hellvelland Sky Ultra. I'm really excited to see how well Robin does at the Dragon's Back race. And Trish too. My goodness me, can't discount Trish. I just hope both of them leave me some chips. Um, There's, no the- gonna. There's no way they're going to. There's no way they're going to. I literally think <laughs> I'll see them in the morning. I think they'll be snoozing and doing all their admin by the time I get back into camp. Uh, yeah, they're going to pretend to be asleep because they're going to be like, "Oh no, I don't want to get chatting to Gary again." We'll go on and on about podcast awards. Just pretend to be asleep. <laughs> well, I'm big worried about some camp, some tent etiquette. I was reading Russell Bentley's blog. He had two bottles. You don't want to get them confused in the night. One was for drinking. One was for 
Go you can't toilet. you can't piddle in a bottle next to Robin or Trish. That's not fair. Russell said that's what he did. Yeah, but we all know Russell as well, don't we? He's a dirty dog, Russell. Just needs a big need a big opening in the top of that bottle. Don't want to be dribbling if you <laughs> <laughs> There's still time to change your tent, girls, or to get some sort of padlock system to keep him out. <laughs> I don't think you'll be weeing in the night because I think you'll be so dehydrated as the days go on. Anybody you... who spent the night with me, I'm at least like... a three wee. I'm a three weeer. Just try and get the thing by the door then. Though I know my good friend who did Dragon's Back had to had to wake up her tent mate in the night because she couldn't actually get out because her oh, legs were so ooh. sore and she had to lift the butt cheeks up to get her out of the tent. I wonder how long she'd been lying there stressing about waking up. The bladder, the jiggle. We'll, we'll cover we etiquette. Oh, let's do a brew with the coaches on that. We etiquette. Well, yeah, I can ask them how she feels about it. <laughs> <laughs> Russell will back me up. We've got some tales from the trails. I've chosen this one. I haven't even asked Gary, but I like it. And I'm not going to make him read it because it's about nipples and cracking and bleeding. Oh, okay. Dear Eddie and Gary, whilst volunteering, whilst volunteering upon Sunday. Oh, that's a very, it's a lot, I love the way you've started that. I can read it in my proper BBC voice. Whilst volunteering upon Sunday, I encountered an absolute warrior of a lady who had sustained the most unusual running injury. Actually, it's not unusual because I've also sustained it. I'll tell the story after this one. This lovely lady was one of our first ladies to pass the Hale Lane checkpoint. Uh, so this is at the window of the woods. And although she didn't look injured at first sight, as most of your listeners will know, you have to pass through this checkpoint early and then you return five and a half miles in. She asked for a pl- plaster. Now, at first look, she's looking strong and no obvious injuries. So I am puzzled. However, upon retrieving our first aid kit, she explained that she'd taken a fall and upon s- and upon again, I know this lady, Sophie, yes. and upon sliding along the woodland floor, had split her nipple open. Oh, God. Oh, plasters in hand. Oh, she put a plaster on it. I stuck her back together whilst reassuring her that I had sustained similar feeding relating injuries. Yes, we've all been there and it will be fine. <gasps> whilst mentally wincing upon her behalf, as I know just how sore she must be. So with her X marks the spot blasters, I'm like, did you put that plaster on yourself? Uh, and her top back in place, she fired back out and around the course. I'm not sure if she's a listener, but I hope that she is, as I just wanted to say that she's an inspiration to us all. True, strong woman on the trails. Thank you, Sophie. <gasps> Cutting your nipple open so as you glide along the floor. I've also, I also have had terrible nipples from feeding babies, but much worse was when I uh, ran around Mont Blanc with my mates and I had my, we got really sweaty and um, had my sports bra on all day. And when I went to take it off, my nipple had like stuck to the sports bra and it oh. ripped the nipple, oh, half oh. the nipple off as I pulled it off. <gasps> half the nipple off. Oh, oh my God. God, the pain. I think that is the worst pain almost as a woman, chaffing on your lady bits and oh, nipple cutting. That's the, the worst nip- pain. The nipples yeah. are so sensitive. And when you fed babies, your boobs and your nipples are totally ruined and they're a bit like corks. So they're easily rubbed oh. and the, the skin is easily uh, roared. <laughs> overshare but also we're all in this together us ladies with the saggy old spaniel's ears <laughs> i wonder as a man what's the worst pains that was like a nut punch it must be worst? It, it must be ball jaffing it must yeah. be oh goodness me that's made me wince anyway kudos to you i hope this was I hope sticking the plaster over it, I think I'd have put some Vaseline or You've something. You've got to take it off, though, haven't you? That's the problem. <gasps> oh, my God. I've got, got about few... um, KT tape in my groin area, but I need to shave first. There's a lot of hair down there. I've got to take that KT oh, tape Oh, for off. God's sake. These are real runners' problems. <laughs> no, but you didn't have to describe your pubic area to me. <laughs> 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 oh, Eddie, what makes the podcast so great? It's you and Gary, you're really normal. Yeah, uh, everything. Oh my God, I'm, images, images I can't unsee. Right, that's it. Let's move on from Tales of the Trails. On. We've got, we've got uh, some competitions. You love the competitions. You do this bit, Gary. You can't get enough of them. Yeah, two competitions, actually, to celebrate our Innovate, Jack Scott and Andy Berry doubleheader Innovate have supplied a pair of Trail Fly Ultra G 280s. Have you got a pair of these trainers, Gary? No, no, I'm a massive Innovate fan. You know, I've had many of the 270s, <laughs> no 280s. I'm really what curious. Is, what is the difference? Why? I think, I think the 280s are a bit 
softer, like the uh, okay. midsole is like ni- nitrogen infused. It's a bit more bouncy. Um, nitrogen infused? What something, the heck? <laughs> I've probably got no. that all wrong, but I think they're a bit bouncier than the regular, um, the 270s, <laughs> which I've got a few, had a few pairs of. Uh, so, yeah, and one lucky listener will uh, win a pair of those at random. I think it's picked on the 1st of September. So there will be a link in the show notes. And I've even, this is where the website works. I've created a link on the website too. So pop over to <laughs> see and trails and you'll see, I think it says just competition. So click on that and it'll take you to the end of your page and do what you need to do. For the rest of July though, we'll have our Patreon only giveaway. So you are the people that make this all possible. So Eddie and I would like to say thanks. I think I mentioned this Last week, we do have quite a few listeners who are not on Facebook. And um, thanks to all those people who reached out and said, Oi. I'm not on Facebook. (laughs) I'm not on Facebook. I don't have to do anything. It's really good. I think uh, Dave Ilano said, oh, I don't have to take a photograph. I don't have to say something. I don't have to take a photo of someone's dog and pretend it's mine or make up some sob story so Gary starts crying. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, literally, you just have to be in it to win it. So... If you are a Patreon member, awesome. If you're not and you'd like being with a chance of winning, yeah, pop over to Patreon and sign up. And all members at the end of July will go on the big random wheel of fortune. What can you win? Well, better tell you. Bella Forte, <laughs> <laughs> Bella Forte Active Root Protein, Rebel X Miles and Mountain Fuel are all putting up the prizes. And basically we pick five winners at random and one winner for every brand. Super simple. Uh, Gary, I went to the cupboard and it's not bare. Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's Still not my dear. It's not just got a few little bits in. It's brimming. It's brimming. It's overflowing. So let's get... I'll read one. You can read one. We won't binge. We'll just take it steady. I'm going to start with Sarah Dunn. Amazing podcast and community. I've listened to Tea and Trails from the very first episode, and I love the Friday fix with the new episodes. Being from the Northeast, it's nice to hear Gary's familiar accent, offering sound advice on all things running, nutrition, training, and more. I love that you guys talk about life. You really can like this one then, aren't you? Nipple chat. As well as the usual running content, plus Eddie championing the ladies' corner. And as a 40-something mum of two juggling life, work, kids, and training, it's just refreshing to hear that it can be workable and others out there are smashing it. And what an absolute role model Eddie is with some amazing achievements under her belt. Always an inspiration. Stop it. You write that bit. (laughs) 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 Edit and review. I just carried on reading and you were like, this person, the way that Eddie handles herself with such dignity and grace, her beautiful long hair. She puts up with Gary every week. Uh, sorry, Zara. Back to your review. I took part in my very first ultra at the weekend and wore my Tea and Trails merch as I hiked those hills, blaming Gary and Eddie's inspiration for causing me to enter and believe it was possible in the first place. And it turned out to be a real conversation starter with those running alongside me. And it was recognized by many fans of the podcast also running at the event who commented and shared my love of everything that is Tea and Trails. It was just lovely to have that conversation starter. I'll defo be flying the flag at future events events first ultra under the belt covering 55k over the lake district fells and now i'm hungry for more thank you eddie and gary love it yes thank you sarah and well you know 55k in the lake district that's um going in feet first for your first ultra that's awesome well done thanks for that really awesome thanks for the review and keep us posted on your next adventure should we do one more? Oh, for sure. Just keep them coming. Keep them coming. <laughs> well, this review comes from Doc James Running. Trail running from the heart. Exclamation mark. Discovered this awesome podcast whilst training for my own upcoming first ultra. How many people are doing their first ultras? I think it's just amazing. I love the combination of Eddie and Gary's personal experience set to great coaching tips and awesome guests. Just listen to episode 26. So brave of Eddie to share experience on the South Down Way 100. It must have been incredibly hard to do that. And I know it'll be appreciated by the listeners. So important to share the lows as well as the highs. Plus so many vital learning points for everybody. Thank you both. Thank you, Doc James Running. Talking of episode 26, I've had so many messages from people saying what you talked about, the South Downs Way, the running with the heat, the DNF. 
I thought about you when I was running. I didn't DNF or I did this, I did this. So my terrible suffering under that bush was I have helped <laughs> many people yeah. to a finish. <laughs> Even though when people say that, I go, yeah, but I still don't finish. But I love that. I love that, that people were like, oh, I heard you, Eddie. I heard you in my ears. Oh, yeah. And... If, you, if that's one takeaway, you know, you can take that away mm. from it just to help. And that's why, you know, we will always share the highs and lows because it is important you don't just want to gloss over it and kind of put the trophies out there all the time there's quite often <laughs> i wish i could <laughs> put the trophies out all the time <laughs> it's quite often it doesn't go out of plan so yeah we do need to share that all too Okay, I think that's all the admin for the week. So what's coming up, Eddie? Uh, right. I suppose I better go home at some point this week. So I will be traveling back to France um, with my kids in tow. Will all of the tour be packed up? You won't have known what's happened by the time. You wouldn't even time. know it's happened. I don't think you'd know it's happened the next day. It'll all have wow. gone, thank God. Uh, quiet start. To quiet start to this week. I'm just going to try. I try and get up and get out. Need to get up and get out in the mornings for... 45 minutes an hour, go back to France because this weekend is the Leger Super Trail, the double, he double header. Oh, goodness uh, me, yeah. It's going to be some great <laughs> podcast content coming up because I've got one goal for this double header and one goal only, and that is to break Bryn and drive his head into the dirt. <laughs> But we all know that that's not going to happen. And Bryn's going to go, I feel fine. I feel fine, actually. You know, I feel really good. And I'm going to be behind him. And he's going to turn around and go, you're right. What's wrong? Yeah, I love. Punch him in the face. <laughs> uh, so we're doing wait. this. <laughs> Travelling back on Friday. Not going to get until the evening. Seven o'clock in the morning. We start the first oh, day of the double. Right. Oh, my God. <laughs> So we've got four hours up and down, up and down. And we're going to give it a little bit of effort, um, but not me mega, just like good training effort, like a training effort, basically. Yeah. Let's say not an, not an Andy Berry RP8, R RP like six. RP5 to 6, <laughs> five depending six. on how I feel. I think I'm going to feel really sluggish because I'm going back to altitude. I'm going to have travelled the day before. Be <gasps> yeah, it's going to be a bit of that. You're right. You're right there. You're right there. Right there. So four hours of that, then recover. The kids wanted to do the kids trail race, but we finished by like 12 1 and the kids trail race isn't until five so i've said to them sorry we're going home and um you're not going to get to do it it's 800 meters rory's one i'm like rory honestly you don't need to sorry it's all about mom and dad this weekend so it's good for them as well because they were they wanted to do it and i was like look you've had a lot and you do a lot. We come to a lot of your races. You can come and watch us for four hours going up and down a mountain. And they're going to the love it. Day, they're not going to love it. And then the next day, we've got to get up 7 a.m. And we're doing, I'm not sure the exact stats. Do you know what? I'm not even going to look. It's about 46K, 3,000 meters uh, trail race. It's me. Uh, all I'm worried about is that, is uh, making the cutoffs. <laughs> Has all this just happened by mistake? You know, your holiday and then this race, or did you what? know? No, I did think, because I thought this week I've got the kids by myself, so I was not going to be able to do much training. So I thought, let's just do a binge weekend. I'm okay. literally going to cover my weekly vert and mileage in 12 hours. Good practice, kind of fun, kind of maybe not fun. Got loads of mates doing the trail race. I've said to them all, you know, you don't want to be picked up by the Bryn and Andy ban um broom wagon that's what it's called isn't it you don't want to be picked up by the Bryn and any broom wagon sweepers. if you see the sweepers you've not had a good day um but i'm hoping it will be kind of be fun because there will be lots of mates out kids can cheer us on and it's just no pressure and i don't have a problem with doing races with with no pressure i quite enjoy oh, I them i absolutely love a race like that there's just, uh, you know, people are like, oh, I can't do training races. I have no problem. I have no problem downloading the delivery app and and gorging myself and no problem doing training races because eyes on the prize now after this weekend. So hopefully yeah. it'll be a really good, a really good back to training, kick, uh, kick our butts into action. And then I'll be back. Normal content will resume, dear listener, and I'll be back training and in the mountains uh so yeah whatever happens it will be i will recount it in all hilarity and um oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll get Bryn on the show though he's he's absolutely dying about how much he gets mentioned he's like stop it i'm like come on everyone loves you everyone wants to share your journey <laughs> he has been a guest on the show hasn't he in the past 
in the past mm. if you scroll back you might yeah. find him maybe we'll get him on for top threat to tell the truth to tell the <laughs> truth of the story <laughs> Uh, what about you? Oh my God! <laughs> well, I'm um, refreshing the Met Office app quite often to see what the Lakeland Hundred for. I've had a few. Met, I've got quite a few runners doing it, and yeah. they were worried that the weather last weekend is going to be the same. Wow, the recce! I saw some. There's a, a great bit of footage. Somebody as they go up the Black Sail Pass, you cross a beck, and it it wasn't a beck on the, the footage. Wow, yeah, like you said, spine, spine, like it looked like um, cauldron snout. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty rough. <laughs> I think it looks worse than it is. If some people were watching that thinking, oh my goodness me, because yeah. that will be dark too. When yeah. you're crossing that, yeah. you just see the raw. Yeah, yeah. I think it looks worse than what it is. If it happens and you have to cross a deep river crossing, two top tips, find the narrowest point, look at the river, look at the current, all things you sort of would do. Make sure your phone isn't down your side pocket of your tights <laughs> uh, and plant that pole. So plant the pole down the river before, so your foot goes next to the pole. So you are almost got a bit of a barrier. If the current is really strong, you've got your pole planted in the river with your foot next to the pole. It's the same as if you're doing a snow crossing to, yeah. to so that you've got a strong point of contact if the current does push you. Just be strong. You can do it. But it's pointless checking the app now. Two weeks. So yeah. much can happen. So much can happen. But yeah, so boys are home. Home alone, actually. George and myself, Esme, is off to London with some friends to see a band called Joker Out. If you remember Eurovision, I'm not too sure which country they represented, but... Wow, they've gone like really, really popular, well, at least with teenage girls. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> as far as running, though... It's not really a long, long run. It's really crazy because when you're doing 100 miles here, last week was four hours, three, three and I think three and a half to four hours on the plan. This week it tops out at uh, two hours. But if you were training for, say, a road marathon, two hours would be quite a significant run. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's what it is this week, two mm -hmm. hours. And it's just going to keep it super simple, unless it's horrendous weather. But the plan is to go up the lakes, just park up at the Blencathra Centre because it's free uh, and just run for an hour on the route, turn around, and come back again. Nothing too hilly, nothing too challenging. I don't want to drive all the way to Coniston because that turns a 90-minute drive into a three-hour drive. And that is, I just hope it just doesn't end up like last weekend and just be a complete downpour. Session-wise, though, it's only one quality session and it's three times eight minutes, but with a big recovery in the middle of that five minutes recovery. So that is fine. A bit of core work, a bit of mobility to... I'm just... I mentioned off air that I'm on antibiotics. Um, so not try, I just don't want to get injured or hopefully this chest infection clears. Well, you know what you should do if you've got a chest infection and you're on antibiotics? Well, you should rest. Yeah. <laughs> well, this does feel like a rest. See you know, what I'm literally. fighting against? You see what I have to put up with. It's no wonder I have to be the sensible voice in this podcast. So I'm going to do it two did. by eight minutes. I'm going to do a two hour long run. Oh, by the way, everybody, I've got a chest infection. I've got antibiotics. You couldn't be more of the stereotypical yeah. runner if you tried. Have you got a stress factor in your femur as well? <laughs> It's not fair, actually, because last week I didn't do my five, four, three, two, one until the weekend because I was feeling a bit ropey Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever it was. So yeah, yeah, I take what you say. <laughs> well, let's. It's going out there. This is just like with the kids when I say, "I told you, I told you not to open that till we got home." I said it would break. I'm saying the same that perhaps you could take it down, have a little bit of extra rest, eyes on the prize. We will keep this snippet recorded and let's just see what happens. <laughs> but I'm really pleased that I'm not, I'm not like last year, I was really at that grumbly knee and that is not bothering me. No, this just year. the lungs, just the lungs. Just so the we chest. Are good yeah. to go. <laughs> the most important thing. <laughs> <laughs> but what I have got, uh, you would have seen my Protein Rebel bit of social media video. Well, on the back of that, yeah, I've skewed some more. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> New podcast host required. <laughs> so I got, some I've done some stuff for Active Root, which um be quite good. Um, and also Innovate sent me some few bits and bobs out uh, to test out. And this is probably a fatal mistake like nothing new on race day but i might one of them is the storm shell jacket which hopefully you know nothing 
too bad can go wrong with that, a waterproof jacket. But one of them is a race vest. So they've got this new, newish race vest out, which is like a two in one, turns from a five litre to a 12 litre pack, which would be great for Dragon's Back Race and also great for Lakeland 100. I might just take it for a spin on the Lakeland 100 and see how it performs over 100 miles. Is that? High risk or stick with what you know or go with a... I think the chest infection, the new back, I think we're adding up for some great podcast content, so I would (laughs) encourage it. I would say yes. In fact, and then why don't you as well just throw in some new nutrition choices and uh, and a coffee and a coffee at the start. Yeah, coffee. Good to go. You know, I had that coffee and immediately I needed a wee. All these things that have plagued me when I've been running, lots of wees and poo stops, and it's all coffee. So, no, coffee. And I love coffee so much. Anyway, that is it. So, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully uh, a Lakeland 100 recce. And Blencath, for me, Blencathra, that is my leaving Braithwaite to Blencathra and then on the coach road. Both years when I've done the Lakeland 100, I've been flying in. I've been loving, loving life before before the wheels fell off. That's been my highlight memory. The nighttime running around uh, the Blencath to the Blencathra Centre. It's my favourite part of the course. Just to see a few head torches because it's kind of getting mm, thinned out. Mm, and it's that. quiet. It's just a treat. It's just a treat to be out there. So, yeah, looking forward to that. We are done for another epic show. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you didn't switch off after all the talk of butt cracks, nipples, Gary's poos. If you did enjoy, take a look over at Patreon. Loads of great deals over there. Save yourself uh, a few quid and we can put some money in the meter as well. Thanks to all our partners and patrons and you, dear listeners, new and old. Be kind to your future self. If you're in the holidays and you're in the trenches as I am, God speed you. We're all in this together. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and give us a share. Tell your mates. Um, oh, God. Do you know, Gary? I had to fill out a form. <laughs> Here we go again. Do you know what I did, Gary? Eddie? Oh, Eddie. I think you know I've all walked out. <laughs> I had to fill out a form, and I one of the questions on the form was, what was is it the your best- job? Oh, I had to fill out what my job was, and I was like, can't even get started on that one. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it was, what's the best bit of advice you've ever been given? And what did I say? Be kind to your future self. Don't drink coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Don't drink coffee. (laughs) Stay safe on the trails. Run wise, run well, and don't overdo it. Listen to your body as well as your favourite podcast. And make sure you refuel with your favourite brew. My name is Gary Thwaites. And I'm Eddie Sutton. And that was episode 31 of Tea and Trails. Mm -hmm.